Hello and welcome back. So let's see how we can have this change to paid when somebody did pay. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to go back to our function, this function we created here. And let's see how we can, uh, oh, wait a second here. Let's see how we can read from the database. So I'm just going to copy what we have here because it's similar to what I'm going to type. So let's paste there for a second. And so we get an instance of the database, then we read from the database. So this one is going to be, um, instead of rows, let's check payments. Let's change that to payments. So payments is equal to, okay, so we get that. And then let's read again from the database. Instead of payments this time, we're going to have, um, payments and then orders. This is just one actually, payment and order. So we'll get these two and then we'll make a comparison. So for the first thing we'll do is, uh, since actually we don't need to get the order, we already have it here, so no problem. All we need is a payment. So let's go to the payment and check if it actually exists. So I've removed the S there, so I just need to make sure that I remove it there as well. So let me remove what's here. Oh, I'll leave that for now. Okay, so select all from payments. That's what we need. Select order from payments. Where, so the where clause is important here. So let's go back to the table here in uh, payments, shall we? So let's see what exactly we're looking for. So here we're looking for the amount and the description here. Amount and what else, what else? Where is that? Where is that? Order ID. So order ID and amount. Those are the two things we are looking for. So approved, completed. I have no idea the difference here. But anyway, uh, yeah, we look at order ID and amount. So, so select O, let's just get O from there. So select O from payments where amount is equal to, so we have to add a variable called amount and order ID, order underscore ID is equal to, we're going to create another variable as well called order ID. Okay, like this. So the ordering doesn't matter, we just need one record. So order by ID descending should be out. Let's just limit it to one. So the thing is, for as long as we have returned a result here, it means things are okay. So at this point, we don't even need to read what result we got. We just need to return something like this. Let's say it's paid. Now, since we're returning HTML, we can actually, uh, let me put paid there we can put some valid HTML so that we can color this differently if we want to, like this. So paid, and then I can actually add some styles here. Let's just say uh, color could be red or orange, something like this. Or this could be something like a button instead and then we add a class since we are using a uh, bootstrap anyway so button and button success something like this okay so we need to create these variables here and we can get those from the order value here so order so we're just going to say order amount is equal to order. Now that's one order there. So it's a, uh, 
I think it's a mount that we're looking for as well in that column. We're just going to check in the uh, in the table. So amount and order ID underscore ID like so. So let's go back to our table here and not in the payments because in the payments we did get correctly the amount and the order ID, which is right there. But in the orders, we have to see what we have. Here we have, uh, actually it's total. So my bad there. That's what we're looking for, total and we are looking for description. So great, let's do that. Here it's description and description and over here it's total. Okay, great. But uh, just to be safe, let's do add slashes here, just so we don't have issues while reading from the database, just in case we have apostrophes or anything like that. Right. Or what we could do is use prepared statements. Since we have prepared statements here, that's always better. So let's do that instead. Let's just put a full colon there, amount, remove that. Put a full column there as well, order ID. And instead of all this, let's put these boys inside an array like that. Okay, so array and so on. Then we can add the array here by just putting a common array like that. Okay, that uh, should do just fine. And here, since we are not actually reading useful information, we can just say select ID so that we just return the ID column because we're not going to use any of this data anyway. We just want to know if we return a result. Once we do that, then we know it was paid. So we can limit the amount of information we are retrieving back to save memory. Alrighty then, so let's give this a spin and see if things will actually work. So if I now refresh the page, you will see that a few of these were actually paid. So there we go, paid, paid. Very nice, the others are not paid. So it's easy to see which ones are not paid and which ones are paid. If you want to keep uh, consistency here, you can copy this and put that return there and just change this from success to warning and or error, I think. I think there's one for error like that. I'm not sure yet, let's check. Then we can put not paid there as usual and I will refresh. So we do have not paid, but it seems error is not a thing. So let me put warning instead, like so. And let's refresh, there you see. So not paid, not paid, not paid. And finally, these two are paid. Okay, so this is how you do it. Now you can uh, give access. So the importance of having this function here. So you see this function that says uh, is paid. So what you can do is uh, every time you want to give access, let's say for example, you, in this case, for example, if you are doing manual, uh, you are, maybe it's called, what is it called? Drop shipping or something like that, where people order things on your store and you have to physically package them and send them. This is not a problem because uh, at this point you see, okay, this one was paid, that was paid, that's okay. So you're going to check the order details and then you can, uh, you can send those details to where you want. Some of these don't have order details because of the testing we were doing, but some of these do. Like that, okay. So you can see where uh, this is going, who ordered it and so on. But if you are doing uh, digital products, if you're selling digital products, you want to give access to a specific page once somebody pays, all you have to do is get this function, just read this function and say is paid and then add the order there to check whether that order was paid for and then whatever is inside this if statement of is paid will, will be, uh, the user will be granted access in there. So that's how you do it on any page because this is a function. You can just ask is paid this order. If it's true, then you know you give them access. If it's false, then you don't. 
Okay, so hopefully that is making sense. And also now, since everything here seems to be working fine, all we have to do on the PayPal side, unfortunately my session has expired, so I need to log in again. So let's do a quick login. However, what you need to do here is just click on the, uh, is just to click on the live section of this part. So here we are in the sandbox, but all you have to do is click live. Okay. Now, if you notice here, once you go to live, you don't have an app anymore. If I go back to sandbox, I do have an app. Back here, I don't. But the process is exactly the same. So you just need to create a new app here and create it there. The same way you created things in the sandbox, you do them also in the live section here. Also the webhooks, uh, same process, just do that. Here there's a list of countries that are allowed to do this. So if you don't see your country here, then you cannot use this PayPal thing. However, you can still use the sandbox for testing. Just in case uh, you are working in a country uh, that does not allow PayPal, but still you are working on a website that resides in a country that does, you can still test things using the sandbox and then move everything over to the live section when that time comes, just like this. So that's all you need to do here. And also in case uh, you start running your website and you see problems, you can always switch back to sandbox for testing and then go back live once you fix that problem. This is all you need to do on the PayPal side, and then you are done. All right, so we are completely done here with, uh, let's go to orders here. So we do have a list of orders uh, in the admin section here, but we also need to be able to see which ones we are paid and which ones we are not, because the other side was just the profile but we need to see the same thing on orders here and it's quite easy to do if you... Uh... Oh, wait a minute. The thing is, uh, this function isn't returning true or false. Here it's returning some text like here and there. So you can make two versions of this, uh, not really a big deal. So is paid uh, you can change the way the the names of the function. So maybe this one is is paid. Um, we can put an underscore and put B or L short for boolean, which is true or false. So is paid boo something like this, so that you can return true or false. Then you can change this to true here, and then you can change this to false here, like that. The advantage of doing this is that uh, when you're doing an if statement, you can have if is uh, paid, boo, like that, and then you add your order uh, row in there, the order of that row to check if that order was paid for or not. And then once you have that, whatever is you put inside here will only work if the person actually paid for that order. So. So you have these two functions to work with. Okay, so yeah. Uh, now this is repeated code obviously here. There are better ways to do this. You can add an if statement. You can add an extra uh, true or false at the end, whether to return a button or to return true or false. Then you can just put an if statement in here and an if statement there as well. But this will do just fine as well. Okay, so let's go to here and see what errors we're having so we can fix this real quick. I do love errors because they give me a challenge uh, so I can see what to fix. I like fixing things. So here we have uh, orders.php on line 30. So this is, uh, where is this? eShop admin orders. So this is in the views on line 30. So let's see what the problem really is. Uh, let's admin. And that was, wait a minute, um, orders. Yes. So where is orders? Online uh, 30, is it? Yes, right here. So what is it complaining about? It's saying uh, 
attempt to read property name on a boolean. So we're trying to read a property name on a boolean. So the property is called name. So it's this one right here. Oh no, let's user and then name. Yeah, I guess that's the one. User and name on a boolean. So name is being read from a boolean. So it means this user is a boolean. It's a true or false instead of being an actual object. So let's check where we do get, where do we get this user thing here? So let's go back to the controller that brings this up. And the controller obviously is, let's see this, that's admin orders. So it's in the admin controller. So let's go admin. And then let's go to the orders function right here. Okay. So we are getting user from here. So that's where we're getting it. And then we're adding it to the orders list. Mm -hmm. Now, the only problem we are doing here is that um, for each orders as order, and then we go in here. I don't know why this isn't working. Oh, I think I do know why this isn't working. It's because if we go back to our table, there are sections here where we don't have a user ID. So this is where the problem comes in for user IDs. So we will have to fix this. Let me copy this since it's the same user ID. Let me use a query instead. Uh, I'm just going to update the whole table. I'll say update uh, orders. Update orders set user URL is equal to, I'll use inverted commas here, is equal to that. So I won't put a where clause, then it means it's going to update every single record. So let me just hit go here. And do you really want to execute? Yeah, it does ask that if you don't apply a where clause because usually that's a mistake, but in this case it isn't. So you see it has updated every record here which is good. I think that will clear the error on the other side as well. If I refresh now, the error is gone. Now, uh, what we need to do is to be able to restrict people from uh, selling or buying stuff if they're not logged in so that we don't have this problem. But if you do want to have people, uh, if you want people to be able to do this without logging in, then you can use the session ID that we added here instead of the user ID. But I don't want to go into that because it will make the thing a whole lot complicated. So for now, what we want is to go back to, where is this? The eShop views, not profile, but uh, the orders view. So let's go down here again to the orders view. Order, right there. Okay, so once we get here, we want one more column here for status. So just here where there's mobile phone, let's duplicate that. And then let's add status here. All right, then exactly how we did the other. So we do have our order here. So no problem, we can easily check if that was paid for. So let's go to the very, very end here, just after mobile phone here. We can always bring the stuff down here the way we did this one no need to go all the way to the other side. So let's just add table data like so. And then here we're going to say, let's put a PHP tag. And we're going to say is paid like so. And then let's add our order there. So whatever the result of that is paid, uh, we know it's a button. It will be positive or negative, but it's still the result. So if I refresh now, we get that again. So not paid, not paid, paid, paid. Simple, easy peasy, right? All right. So, so far we are done with this. So in the next video, let's look at restricting, uh, restricting buying or making orders if you're not logged in.